I love New Birth Baptist Church. The voices of a mission. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to Him. I want us to express our thanksgiving on Resurrection Sunday. I want us to give to God a reflection. I want God to have evidence that we're grateful for His ultimate sacrifice. He didn't sacrifice a pinky or a thumb, a little toe. He sacrificed his whole self. Right. And can you imagine after giving himself? Right. He got to argue with you about giving 10%. Right. I want you in this moment to make a sacrifice. That phone is already in your hand. There's no, uh, there's no excuse for you not to give on Resurrection Sunday. Right. Knowing that very easily you could have died last night. Come on. But it kept you alive because you still got purpose. Ah. You still got a destiny. You still got an assignment. Now that that phone is on your hand, all of our giving prompts are available on the screen. Whether you're going through GiveLify, text to give, push pay. Those of you old school, you looking for a stamp, you want to mail it. <laughs> But I want you to challenge yourself. What must I render unto God for all these blessings? God made everything and everything belongs to Him. I want you to think about uh, a year ago this time, we thought we would be out for three weeks. Right. <laughs> thought we'd be out for a month. We had no idea that 14 months and counting. It's in my title, New Birth Baptist Church. New Birth Baptist Church. If you want to go watch it live on YouTube, you can go to YouTube. Um, New Birth Baptist Church on YouTube. It's live right now. But I just wanted to share it with y'all because, baby, they got me lit. I had to get out of bed. New Birth, we are a tithing church. We have evidence of how it is that God gives seed to the sower. Yes. Our tell you hands down, there is no church out giving New Birth. No ministry pound to pound that is glorifying God through giving at the level that we are. So grateful that back in the fall we were able to bless people with $365,000 worth of support to stop people who were getting ready to face an eviction. People who get ready to lose their homes. We help students who are getting ready to be put out of school. Last year we were able to bless 50 students in a pandemic. Right. With scholarships to go to HBCUs. Come on, Newberg. I'm so grateful that whenever it is that you give, you know that you're giving in a safe space. I'm appreciative of you this because God only gives seed to the sower. He gives you more so that you can get give more. more. Come on. I'm going to say that he gives you more. So you can so give that you more. Can give Hello. More. I've been saying to you for the last two years, I think that the church is a ought to be held liable if we ask for the 10%, but we don't tell you how to maximize the 90%. As a consequence, we're trying to raise up a generation of entrepreneurs, of those who understand independent wealth, those who are trying to create legacy wealth. We want every person who is a member of our church to have two to three streams of income. If you know I'm talking about you, wave that hand real quick. Hello. Come on, if you believe that you are not going to be beholden to one job, because this year you found out how they don't think you are essential. Mm. How many of them didn't think that you were necessary? Thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all make sure you share the broadcast, share, share, share. Let's get somebody a word this morning. In business by storm. Our, her truck is one of the trucks that we are highlighting on today. This is my sister from Slutty People. Make some more noise in here. Y'all clapping like you go to Burger King. Come on. That's Pinky. Let it be I eat your food, girl. We're doing an institute called the Launching Pad. The Launching Pad because we want to help you get your business off the ground. We want you to know that by next year, this time, you're going to be in a place of confidence. Can you imagine coming from a place? Here it is. That you got no relatives here, no family here, and you start all over and you find out that scripture is true. Then if God be for you, who can, who can be against you? Uh -huh. Baby, I want you to just tell them how God has blessed your business 
First of all, how many people know that God is a good God? Look at me standing up. I'm going to share my testimony briefly. Come on. In 2016, I lost everything. My restaurant got burned down due to a fire. My car got repoed. I got evicted out of my apartment. I went flat broke. I had $5 in my bank account in 2016. Today is 2021. Last year, I made over $5 million. Talk it. And I don't Talk know. Talk it. it. Talk it. I spent $5 million in my business. I paid the tuition of 30 students to go to college. I donated over $250,000 to people. Talk Y'all, and she's not lying. She's such an amazing person. I've met her many a times, and she works at Slutty Vegan, and she's so pure. After you get sanctified, go ahead and get sanctified. Amen. Amen. Come on, Biggie. This is the new birth way. Listen to me, every entrepreneur. I need you. This is the end of the early bird special. We all have to leave the direction that we came from. We also have the director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is also going to be a part of this training ground called the Launch Pad. I need you because your phone is already out to text NB Launch, NB Launch to 71441. NB Launch to 71441. Thank y'all again for watching this Easter. Resurrection Sunday with me And I hope y'all stay Share, share, share Let's share the love And I appreciate y'all for watching it with me It's only like a, it's only like 30 minutes to an hour, y'all It's not gonna be long I'm glad to see y'all So let's do this If you can't stay, it's okay Jonathan is coming next Mr. Jonathan is coming next Here's what I need to do Your phone is already out I want you, even if you in your car I need you to take a selfie Take a ussy Come on, take a selfie I'm alive, come on Praising God in the middle. This is you celebrating God in the middle of COVID-19. I want you to take that selfie, take that ussy. I want you to post it on social media, even those of you who are at home. I'm do alive. it in your bathroom. <laughs> do it in your pajamas. If it's anything less than that, don't do it. <laughs> but I need you, please, take that picture, take that selfie, take that ussy, post it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat. Hashtag new birth now. Hashtag new birth now. Do me a favor. Tell somebody. Tag somebody. Tell somebody. We going up we on go, Sunday. We going up on a Sunday. To a man that really needs no introduction at New Birth. He is a friend of New Birth. He is a father. He's a husband. He's a pastor. He's an innovator. He's a songwriter. He's an artist. And he's here to celebrate with us today. I need you to hump your horns and make some noise for Pastor Charles G.K. Jesus, wherever you are. You better thank Charles. Pastor said it's all right. We social distancing. So if you want to get out your cars, get in the front of your car, come to the dance floor before we jump in. You better thank Charles. We celebrate one of the greatest to ever do it. 
one of God's best communicators, philanthropists, give to the kingdom of God, the body of Christ, fashion icon, civil rights leader, Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant. Come on, y'all make some noise. I'm so honored to be at the place that changed my life forever, the place where I learned you don't have to take sides. You can take over. Will y'all help me celebrate the memory of Bishop Eddie L. Long? Help me celebrate Lady Vanessa, the Long family. Charles, you better stay. Listen, y'all. It's one rule. It's Resurrection Sunday. And listen, here's the rule. What's the rule? This is a praise party. Come on. I'm going to say it again. This is a praise party. You better stay. Are y'all ready to lift them high? Yeah. Anybody grateful for the grace of God? Yeah. Come on, let's go. Georgia.
bass turned up my alarm. <laughs>
raise them on live, in the street, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> 
You don't remember the name of Jamal Bryant. I need you to know the name of Jesus Christ. Because there is a name that is above every name. And that is his name that every knee must bow. Come on, cameraman. And every tongue must confess. Here at New Birth, we believe you can be spiritual without being spooky. Right. You can get saved without your eyes going to the back of your head. You can get saved without your mouth foaming up. You can get saved, here it is, without falling out in the front. But I don't care where it is that you're watching from California to Colorado to North Carolina to the Carolina Islands. I'm believing you're going to get saved today. All that is required of you is that you will confess with your mouth. You'll believe in your heart. The amazing thing about the pandemic, you don't even have to live in Georgia to be a member of New Birth. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's people that drove here from Tennessee. Make some noise. Some people that flew in from Maryland. There's some people that came from Virginia. Some people that drank up from Florida. Say, I've got to get connected to the power source. I want you to get saved today. I want you to join our church. I got to tell you transparently, I want to be your pastor. But more than anything, I want Jesus to be your Lord. I'm telling you that while you were in sin, he died for you. When you didn't even know yourself, can I go a step further? When you didn't even like yourself, mm. God loved you enough to send you his very best. Those of you, yeah, this is old school saints here. If you don't do nothing else. Come on. If you can shout because he saved your soul, Come on. would you open up your mouth and give him glory? Hey! Come on, you don't sound like you're excited. Come on! All of the prompts that are necessary, I've got live prayer counselors standing by. All of the information is on your screen. Our intercessors want to pray with you. We want to walk you through this process. If there's anybody who is here physically, and you know Jesus died for your sins. Would you lift that hand and wave it right where you are? Come on. Oh. Oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Mixture of myrrh and aloe. 
and it weighed 75 pounds. I want to tell you my subject and when I declare this subject, some of y'all don't know I'm talking about you. When I say this subject, if I'm talking about you, make some noise, honk your horn, put hearts on the thread. The name of my sermon today is, I'm a lot to deal with. Oh, that's me. That is me. I'm a lot to deal with. <laughs> I'm a lot. Yes. I'm a lot. To deal with. If that's you, I want you to type it on the thread. I'm a I'm lot, lot to, to deal, deal with. with. If you are here, would you just yell it to somebody across the I'm field? a lot to I'm deal with. Deal with. I'm a lot to deal with. In the hometown of one of my favorite artists, Prince and Revolution, six foot four George Floyd moved to Minneapolis from Houston. Last year he went to a corner store and bought some cigarettes. He was targeted at the door by the owner who assumed that he was using a fake $20 bill. It's unfortunate for those who are so used to having the fake that they don't recognize the genuine. Mm. Come on. Come on. One of the things that people can't stand about you that you're real. Is no matter what, you always gonna keep it real. Come on. I'm a lot to deal with. Honesty is always offensive mm. to people who take comfort in life. Come on. Within minutes, squad cars showed up on the scene and they wanted to apprehend you with no probable cause. Mr. Floyd, Resistance to the squad car that they are just now discovering in court this week is that at six foot four, George Floyd is claustrophobic. Mm. The officers couldn't understand anybody so tall having anxiety about spaces that are so small. I know you don't look like it, but people don't understand that you get antsy when they try to force you in the situation that, that make you uncomfortable. Come on. They think they're slick trying to belittle you mm. and then hide it behind sarcasm and a joke. Mm. In this season of your life, you can't shrink yourself mm -hmm. to pacify grown people who are insecure. The brother of George Floyd, his name is Rodney said at the funeral in Houston that George Floyd was going to change the world. Mm. There were demonstrations in all 50 states and 50 countries outside of the U.S. After George Floyd was killed, the Confederate statues were taken down. Come on. After yeah. George Floyd was killed, $90 million was given to Black Lives Matter. After George Floyd was killed, it seems almost imminent that Officer Derek Chauvin is on his way to jail. Mm. If George Floyd could speak from the grave today, what would he, say, he would say to his arresting officers, as you should say to your haters, don't underestimate me. Yes. Because even if you kill me, I'll come back and haunt you from the dead. They are those who are upset because they can't believe you have outlived the traps mm, that they, said that they thought you would never hey. survive. My dear comrades, this is a seminal week for those of us who know that there is a threat when you are a lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. Is this very week that George Floyd's murderer stands on trial and yet we're anxious because we don't know whether there'll be a conviction. Right. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but 53 years ago today, mm. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated mm. and he never pulled out a weapon. Mm. 
2,021 years ago, Jesus was crucified and rose again. When you get to the point that you understand there is a lot on you, you have to be mindful almost to the brink of paranoia that there are elements in the universe that want you dead. They are not after your car. They are not after your money. They are after your life. Come on. Anybody in here who's over 30 know that there were two instances in your life where you thought you were not going to make it, but it was the grace of God that snatched you hey. out. And people don't understand why you set God your space, why it is that you keep to yourself right. behind the business that pays right. you. You've been through too, too much, much. Hey. to leave yourself vulnerable. Come on. John chapter 3. There's a man by the name of Nicodemus who sneaks up on Jesus and he does it at night. And he asks of Jesus because he needs clarification on what does it mean to be born again. Mm -hmm. He's confused because he doesn't know whether this requires reincarnation. He wants to know will he have to go back into his mother's womb. Cameraman. And Jesus says to him, no, you don't have to do all of that. All you've got to do is the process we just walked through moments ago. You've got to confess. And you've got to be receptive. Right. But Nicodemus couldn't wrap his head around it. So he left Jesus without saying a word. Mm. I don't know where you are, but there are 1,300 of you that need to know on this resurrection morning. That there's some people who just won't get you. Right. No matter how it is that you try to break it down, no how matter, it is that you try yes. to slow walk it, no matter how it is that you try to lower your expectation, right. no matter how you try to conform to the culture, they just don't understand how you have an opinion all of your own. Right. How it is that you move to the beat of your own drum. You will be free when you are liberated from other people's approval. Mm. When you understand, I don't even need my family to validate me. I, I don't even need you to give me a title or position because I know my worth with none of that hanging over my head. Mm. Nicodemus just can't understand Jesus. So he walks away. Because he thinks this whole salvation thing is too much. This whole church thing is so much. He walks away from them. <clears throat> and amazingly, I need you to see what happens. Is that we never see Nicodemus again. Mm -hmm. Until John 19. After Jesus has been crucified. And a brother by the name of Joseph shows up. And offers his tomb for Jesus to be buried in. And notice who comes with him. Good old Nicodemus. Uh -huh. Nicodemus met Jesus in John 3. Mm -hmm. But never shows up by Jesus' side until Joseph, John 19. Mm -hmm. I want to say this to somebody and finally you should be sending this text. Don't wait, wait. until I'm dead. in the ground uh -huh. before you see my value. Yes, sir. Isn't it amazing that before Dr. King was assassinated, his popularity was at its lowest. George Floyd struggled to get a job when he was alive. But now that he's dead, people want to donate to his children. Mm -hmm. Love me now. Come on. I don't know who this is for, but somebody ought to type that in all Love text. me now. Love me now. I need somebody to say that out loud. Don't wait for Love me to now. Don't wait for my tax returns to come in. Love, Love come on. me now. I'm not when you need something. Come on. And then he must stay with Jesus in chapter 3 when he met him. He would have met the woman at the well in chapter 4. And Nicodemus stayed with Jesus in chapter 3. He would come on. He would have met the man healed at the pool of Bethesda in chapter 5. He would have saw it all. 
Had he stayed with Jesus in chapter 3? Come on. He would have saw in chapter 6 how Jesus fed the 5,000. Come on. Had he stuck with Jesus after chapter 3? Y'all aren't listening. He would have saw the blind man recover his sight. Right. In had he stayed with Jesus from chapter 3? You better talk to him. He would have seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead in chapter 11. <laughs> Nicodemus wasted 16 chapters of his life. Mm. Muhammad Ali said, if you are the same man at 40 that you were at 20, mm. you wasted 20 years of in your, your life. life. Right. Somebody is going to regret not staying with you. Somebody is going to regret that they didn't walk through the chapters of their life with, with you. you. Come on! Somebody is going to regret that they didn't maximize the access that they had to you. But now that the door is closed, it's too you late. have lost hey. John chapter 3. You bet the time. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the middle of the night. But in John chapter 19, he comes to Jesus in broad daylight. I'm not preaching to you, I'm talking to somebody behind you. You are too good of a woman mm. to only be visited at night. Come on, I can't hear you. Talk to him, Jamal. Talk to him. To be somebody's secret. Talk to him. If you can't take me out, I can't let you in. Come on. Some of you can only praise God when you in the church. I praise him out. I want to know how many of you will hey, praise him in a right car. Here, you heard all of them. How many of you will shout in your car? Hey. How many of you will give God glory I will. in your living room? How many hey. of you will say, I will bless the Lord? And If we were in church on Resurrection Sunday, you'd be running down the aisle, you'd be screaming at the altar, you'd be waving your hand, uh -huh. but now that your relationship with God has got to go public, uh -huh. you sit you don't want to cheat it down. Uh -huh. I want to take 30 seconds right here. Will you praise God in public? I will praise Him in public. Will you bless God in, in public? public? Will you wave your hand? In public? Yeah. Hey. Will you shout out loud? Hey, in public! Come on! He'll do it for you. Yes, he will. Don't wait till it's too late. Come on! Y'all don't hear him. Y'all don't hear him. Traditionally, Traditionally, Jews oh, are buried with five pounds of spices. With five pounds of spices. But I need you to read what the scripture says. Is that Jesus is not buried with five pounds. Mm -hmm. He's buried, watch what the Bible says, with 75 pounds. Five pounds you can hide in your pocket. But 75 pounds, mm. you got to carry it on your back. Mm. If he was burying somebody regular, mm -hmm. it wouldn't require much. Mm. But because he's burying the king of kings, mm. it will take a heavy weight. I'm talking to those of you who know the anointing that's on your life. It weighs a lot. The, the gift that's on your life, uh -huh. it is a heavy burden. The assignment that God has given to you, it's not easy. Five pounds. I wait this over, y'all. It's for people who are regular. Mm -hmm. But 75 pounds. It's for people who have the lineage of royalty. Mm -hmm. Today you are standing next to somebody who has royalty coursing through their veins. <sighs> you just missed what I just said. Today you're standing next to somebody who may not have pedigree or background, but the 
gift of God is so heavy on their life that even people who don't like them can't get rid of them. I'm, I'm talking to somebody, if the glory wasn't on your life, you would have lost your mind. You, you would have committed suicide. You, you would have threw in the towel, but you're able to tell the devil, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Right. To bury somebody regular. <laughs> to bury somebody regular is five pounds. But to bury somebody royal is 75. Mm -hmm. There are people who've been looking at you in this pandemic and they can't believe with everything you're dealing with how you're still breathing. Right. How you're still functioning. Right. How you haven't become bitter. You better tell all of them it's going to take more than this to bury me. <laughs> The interesting thing is he is not just burying a king. He is burying the king of kings. Oh, yes. I came today outside in the middle of a pandemic. And unlike Nicodemus, I didn't come to bury him. Mm -hmm. I came to lift him up. Yes. I can't hear no worshipers in here. I came to lift him up. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me. Mm -hmm. If you don't lift him up, I tell you to lift up that hand. Come on, it's going to take more than that. I got to lift him up hey. while they try to suppress my vote. Come on. I got to lift him up yeah. while they try to gentrify my community. I got to lift him up while they try to arrest my black boys. I got to lift him up. It takes five pounds for somebody regular, but it takes 75 for somebody royal. Mm -hmm. For the anointing that is on your life, I want you to know after today, never apologize because you are a lot to deal with. I can't hear nobody. I told you, don't back up for nobody. Either you deal with me or get away from me. Either you roll with me or you're going to get rolled on. God said if you sat today, whatever you got now, you ain't even scratched the surface. Come on. It's getting ready to be exceedingly. It's getting ready to be abundantly. It's getting ready to be pressed down. Come on. Shaking together and running over. Yeah. Everybody. Claim it. To whom much is given, 
I wish I was that new verse. To whom much is given, much is required. I'm unsummoning you now for the second time for you to get saved. I don't want you to be like Nicodemus and miss your moment. Can you believe last Easter? 500,000 people didn't know it would be their last Easter. Y'all just miss what I just said. Mm. I said, last Easter, 500,000 people was their last Easter. didn't know it was going to be their last Easter. Yeah. And yet you're still here. Mm. I don't want you to clap if you ain't expecting a lot. But after what you've been through, come on, put some wood on it. God owes me a lot. I've been faithful over a few things. He's got to make me ruler over many. I'm expecting a lot. Make sure you do I want you to go say do. <laughs> you are no featherweight. You are the heavyweight champion of the world. Because you've dealt with some heavy stuff. And none of it was heavy enough to bury you. Right. None of it was heavy enough to wipe you out. Right. None of it was heavy enough for you to end your life. I want us to fall in the footprints of Nicodemus. Because he brought an offering unto God after the burial. Everybody talks about the women that brought spices. Nobody ever talks about the man that did. Mm. I want you right where it is that you are to give a seed because it is not too late to fall in the footsteps of Nicodemus. I want all of you, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to give a seed of 75 because God, I'm dealing with a lot. The weight is heavy on my life. I'm overwhelmed, I'm outstretched, I'm burdened, but I am not buried. Mm. Did you hear out of my mouth what I was trying to put in your ear? I'm burdened, but I am not buried. Right. I want you to sow that seed of 75 now, those of you on Facebook, those of you on YouTube, those of you who are streaming. I'm sowing this seed, watch this, because I want to be loved now. I want to be valued now. I want to be appreciated now. I'm sowing this seed, Pastor, because I cannot afford to waste another chapter of my life. I'm sowing this seed right now because I am expecting a whole lot. Because I've had to endure a whole lot. Something good is getting ready to happen to you. I want you to point to somebody around you and tell them, expect a lot. Expect a lot. Expect a lot, y'all. Y'all ain't been to church in a long time. I, can tell <laughs> I said, find somebody and tell them, expect a lot. Expect a lot. Minister Nelson is coming. We're getting ready to close out. Hear me, do not leave. After the show, here's the after party. <laughs> Please, whatever it is that you do, do not leave. Um, we still have some miles that we have to cover. Still got some passages. We want to go through. I don't want you to rush off of the campus at the end of service. Do not rush. I want you to support all of our black truck vendors. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I want you to support oh, them. This is my like you want somebody to support yours. I want you to stand in line for them. Like next year, this time, somebody's going to be waiting in line to support you. I'm grateful. Do me a favor. We used to have them in church my son. in the parking lot. Would y'all shout for the overflow room over there? Come on, give them some love. Sing my shout son. For, I said shout for the overflow room. God owes them a Hold it out for my son, please. Tonight is our Bible study. Hear me and hear me well. We're watching all of the COVID number data uh, before it is that we're going to end uh, to our sanctuary physically. Close uh, it out, my son. Close it out, my son. Do not miss the move of God that is coming. Pastor Linus, I'm sorry.
If you were blessed, will you honk your horn? If you were blessed, will you wave your hand? Listen, after the party, it's an after party. And I don't want you to stay right where you are. I want to give you a few instructions of what's getting ready to take place. Maybe, maybe you're dealing with a lot. The Bible says if you are dealing with a lot, why don't you just cast your cares on him? And he cares for you. Right. Can I share something with you for those who are listening in your car? And for those who are you are on our line. God cares for you. I don't know what it is that you're facing or what it is that you're experiencing. But we have right now live prayer leaders that want to touch point with you. I encourage you to text NB Prayer to 71441. That's NB Prayer 71441. We want to pray with you in the virtual space. We can't touch you, but we are going to have an encounter with you because there is no distance in the spirit. Also, family and friends, I want to let you know that today Hold you on. can sign Let me turn around. Okay, so thank y'all so much for joining the turn out. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for joining with me. Sorry, my face looks amazing. I didn't even wash my face this morning. But I just wanted to share that with you guys because I really love New Birth Baptist Church. And I saw the comment. This is the comment I wanted to say. I saw the comment that had said um, he has a lot of kids everywhere. Granted, this man may have in his life slept with women and had children, whatever the case may be. But it doesn't mean somebody cannot change. I'm not perfect. To some people, me dating men is not right. Some people are out here making only fans to make a living and that's giving your body away. Some of us are shacked up with people who we're not even married with. We're having children out of wedlock. You're not supposed to tattoo your body. At the end of the day, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect, but God is working with us and through us. And if God is working through him to make him a better person while he's making us a better person, that's all that matters. So for you to come in here and judge a person for their past or for what they've done goes to show that you're not even right. So get yourself together first before you come casting stones at somebody else for something that they have done. No pastor has started off perfect. A pastor had to start off just like you, running the streets, drinking liquor, smoking weed, having sex. They were, they're human. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to have to go through this thing called life. So just because he's up there and may have 20 darn kids doesn't make him lesser than me or lesser than you. So stop pointing fingers and just listen to what he's saying and take what you want to take and whatever you don't want to take. Like my mama told me, you don't take it because everything a preacher is going to say doesn't have to mean he's right. So just take what feels good and what you know is right or what you want and you keep it moving. I love you guys. Thank you for joining. They're closing it out. I'm going to let this play out and then we're gone. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Okay. Again, if y'all want to go back and rewatch this, the YouTube channel is called New Birth Baptist Church on YouTube. The live will be there and all their other stuff. If y'all want me to start doing this every Sunday when they go live on Sundays, we will do it. I love this. I'm not a word. I do it. So, yeah. I got some stuff to bless y'all. I want to celebrate the love of God. I need y'all to come a little closer. Take us out, Carl. brand new song coming to radio soon. And we're going we to do a sneak peek right now. And it's for Billion. Y'all ready? Willie Jones, we ready? Come on, y'all. Right here. It was the blood. Shed on Calvary. Shed on Calvary. This is new song. Don't break the law. Can never be shown to me. I can never 
for joining me on this Easter Sunday. Y'all go have a good week, good rest of the month, and hopefully this blesses somebody. And I love you guys. Thank you so much.